jumping in with a quick cold open because I'm going to be doing a Q&A video. If you have questions for me, you can either tweet them using the hashtag AskEverydayAI or you can post them in the thread that will be on the r slash everyday i subreddit starting when this video is posted this video will come out in about two weeks so get your questions in google it's hard to go through a day at least for me without interacting with something that was created by google whether it be your email your calendar navigation or that random question that's just been bugging you for the last couple hours. Google products have infiltrated pretty much every part of our lives. In fact, you're using Google right now to watch this video, which I highly encourage, so please continue doing that. Now, just because Google has become such a big part of our lives doesn't mean that it hasn't made its fair share of missteps and mistakes. From Project Maven to facial recognition issues to Google+, Plus. I think that a lot of people would agree that Google tends to be a bit of a necessary evil in our lives. And this also isn't to say it's the worst offender. I think in my book that's probably Facebook, but Google's had its own issues. On Tuesday, Google tried to change our minds. Google I.O. is an event that occurs pretty much every year. Google I.O. is similar to Apple's WWDC in that it's an event where Google tends to announce the latest new products and changes to current services. You might remember it from last year because it was when they announced Duplex, a voice recognition and conversationalist software that could call people and make appointments for you while sounding like a person. There was a lot of controversy around it last year because it sounds like a person. It has all of those ums and likes that we often reflexively put into our, our speech. And if you were the other person on the line, it wasn't obvious that you were not speaking to a human. This year, Google wants to calm our fears, especially from last year and from some of their more recent scandals. And this year's Google I.O. event really reflected that. Now, I'm only really going to touch on the AI-related updates, so like, if you want to hear about the new and cheaper Pixel 3, I'm sure Marquez Bramley has already released a video on that. Let's start off where we left off last year, Duplex, and by proxy Google Assistant. Duplex was formally released as an integration in Google Assistant near the end of 2018, and part of that introduction involved adding a caveat whenever it makes a call that announces itself as an AI bot so people are aware of what they're talking to. In addition, businesses have the option of opting out of duplex calls, either by updating their business listing in Google or by saying so if duplex calls them. So what's new in 2019? Well, Google Assistant is faster than ever, up to 10 times faster. And Duplex has been deployed to the web. So if you want to make an online hotel reservation or car rental, it can fill out all of the forms from when you're staying to how many beds you need. From a technical perspective, I think that this is pretty interesting. Um, it continues a lot of the work that's being done in personal assistance and voice assistance and applies it to more complicated scenarios. And from a user perspective, I'm not convinced that this is going to be more useful than things like autofill. In most cases, when I need a form autofilled or if I'm making a hotel reservation, having to put in the fact that I'm staying for two nights and need two double beds or whatever isn't really a big burden to me. Having said that, if you travel a lot, I could see it being useful. Granted, if you travel a lot for work, I assume you have someone else to book your flights. So let me know what you think of it in the comments. Other announcements at Google I.O. included Live Relay, which is their new set of accessibility tools for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. It allows live transcription of conversations and also allows for text to speech in real time. So if you have trouble being understood, perhaps because you've had a stroke, it would be able to convert your text into speech during a conversation. There's also a new way for Google to watch you while you're home. The Nest Hub Max has both facial recognition and voice recognition, so it can identify all of the people who are in your household by either their faces or their voices, and can tell if there's somebody who shouldn't be there. Lastly, Google has been putting more of an emphasis on data privacy by making your privacy settings more accessible, incorporating incognito mode into Google Maps and YouTube so that it can't track where you're going on Google Maps, and by allowing you to delete all of the data that Google has on you at regular intervals. So was 2019 the year that Google realized that it needed to get itself together and support its customers and its users more than its corporate interests? No, 
Uh, not really, no. <laughs> Most of these announcements have been a long time coming, and all of them are in line with the product development that Google had laid out last year. Google has been open about the fact that it continues to work on consumer and potentially military AI. What they did do this year was frame it differently. So last year, a lot of the new shiny AI products and services were framed as these big ventures into consumer AI, and the algorithms and the software were really the focus of the event. I think that they realized after last year's event that doing so tends to draw more concern than it does praise. And so this year, they pitched their products from the perspective of the user, looking at different ways that the software would improve the quality of your life, improve the efficiency of your work, instead of talking about how cool the software itself is. This way, you ideally have fewer concerns brought up about the AI itself and more discussion around the fact that it's super cool that your home security can recognize your dog. But at the end of the day, we'll just have to wait and see how useful or harmful these things can be. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you like this video, you can let me know by subscribing to my channel and smashing that like button. You can also become a patron. Thank you so much to all my current patrons on Patreon. And if you want to follow me outside of Google, <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter, which is not necessarily better. I'm at Jordan B. Harrod. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!